Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about this chatbot I made it myself and how you could do so yourself. So, first of all, let's go to the README. These are the required imports, Python 3.7, Transformers, and Fuzzy Wuzzy. Uh, running the program, just do pi and then whatever you named it, dot pi. And then it's pretty basic from there, it's just a chatbot. So, let's get to it. First you have our imports here gonna need transformers you're gonna need these two especially the way that I made this work is it's initially um, set up using the blender bot and then it has its known questions and the answers uh, that you program it to provide you this is our data file we're just gonna need a data file dot uh, JSON then we're gonna need our chatbot.py file so first of all we have to make our class Cody bot and we need to start setting some stuff up. So first of all, we have our tokenization variable because the Blender bot, which we use if it doesn't recognize a question that we provide it, it needs um, the text to be tokenized before it can understand it. Same here. This is the version of the Blender bot that we're using as well. It's a version that's uh, pretty easy to set up in here. It's not gonna take as much space as the full version would. And then we have our personal data, and we load that from our JSON file here using load personal data, which is just a basic um, function right here. You can see it just opens the file and just loads it into a readable format for Python and returns it. So we return that and provide it to the self, which is pretty bot. We have self context, which is empty for now, and self conversation, which is empty for now. These get appended as a user is asking a question. So you can see right here, conversation history gets appended. We get personal response after it gets a the user's input and provides a response. And then we have self known or what is it? Self context, which is used. In a few instances, basically, whenever it's required for a follow-up response is one that is used. But let's, let's move on from there because we'll get to that in a little bit. So we have its known questions. This is actually really, really important for making a chatbot that actually um, works beyond just being you, have, you having to type like what is your name verbatim with a question mark to get the answer. I mean, there's no difference in that than basically just having an, a big list of if else statements to see out you know what I mean it's basically the thing that separates it other than the blender bot from being just a simple you know if user says this out this huge program so first of all this is a question that the JSON file is going to have this is the exact syntax basically the key is what we'll call it because you're gonna have later on um, it's going to be keys and variations and key is basically what we're going to call a known question. So the key right here and the variations here. So let's check out the JSON file. What is your name? This would be the key and you can see question. So I could honestly change this to key if I wanted to, but no. So what is your name? And we have the response. My name is Cody Raby. The response is going to be the same every time, depending on the variation, as long as it falls within uh, the similarity score that we are using Fuzzy Wuzzy to get, which I'll go over here in a minute. But basically, you're going to just want to provide for the known questions your actual key, and then in this syntax, some questions that are variations of it. So, what's your name? Tell me your name. What's your name? Question mark versus you know what is your name is question mark hey what is your name and the way fuzzy wuzzy works is it automatically lowercases everything before it looks for the similarity score you see right here dot lower so you honestly don't need to make you know this capital or whatever it doesn't matter but i just did anyways so you do this for each key you set up the variations for it and then after doing so you're basically going to be done with setting up the initialization of the bot at least like the basicness of it so from here we already went over this this gets used to load the personal data from the json file which we'll look at again 
I'm just gonna keep it on here for a second so you can kind of understand it a bit more. Um, we've got the question, we've got the answer, and then in the known questions we have um, variations of what the question could look like for our program. So this loads it, we have our completed bot here. So let's get to some of the functions, match known questions. So basically the way this works is you have the self and then we have the user input. The user input gets provided to this function and then it looks for in the key, which is basically all of these, or these, all the questions, that's the key. It looks for through that with variations and it compares basically what the user said like I said, lowercase to the key. And if the similarity score is high enough, which means basically, you know, someone says, what's your name? And it's close enough to what is your name? You return the key that was found matched with it. We do the same thing for the variations right here. It's the exact same thing. We lowercase everything, compare them using fuzzy wuzzy partial ratio and then we return the key if it's found. And if nothing gets found, we return none because we don't want to return um, the key for it to get the personal response. So moving on from that, because if we get none, we want to use BlenderBot basically. So moving on from that, we have get personal response. We have the user input. We have the self, same thing. It basically looks through the context um, of the conversation and it looks for the follow-up responses that might need to be re like um, responded based on what the input is. Basically this one, it's not as important, so I'm gonna kind of skim over this. And then this is where it actually is pretty important. Well, this right here. It's, it's all in the same function, but basically it's looking for match question with the, the known question from the user input, match known question, Right here, I already went over it. So that's basically looking for what key was provided, if any. So if any key was provided or none. So if the match question is there, meaning, all right, yes, there was a key, then it looks for what to respond with basically, which is in the item, which is kind of JSON format. It looks for a question, it gets a response to that question, and then the follow-up question or follow-up responses if there is any sometimes there's not because look right here there's none only right here there is this is what actually gets our response it appends it to our conversation history which is right here which was empty and then it returns the response which we got here like i said it looks for the match question the json file it's not in the json file anymore it's in it's in our self right here but I'm just saying JSON file because it's from the content of the JSON file. So it basically gets that and it appends our conversation history. Where were we? It appends our conversation history and returns a response. And then this right here is essentially the same thing. Except for it also does the fuzzy wuzzy. And if after all of this, there's still no response, return none. We have this, get response. We have the user input, we have the self, and we have personal response equals self.get personal response, which is right here. So this function calls this function, and then this function calls this function. So basically we look for a personal response from the user input, and if we get one, i.e. not none, meaning that we were able to find what we're looking for through all of this, then we're gonna return that. And if no personal response is found, then we're basically going to have done this, get nothing from it, so it's going to fall back to the Blender bot. And input equals self -tokenizer, uh, tokenizer user input. This basically makes it readable for Blender bot. It makes it be able to understand um, what you're trying to give it. This right here, it basically tokenizes it. So that's what this self model stuff does right here. That's why this was important, is because uh, the BlenderBot needs to be able to understand what you're saying. So we get our response from the BlenderBot, self-tokenizer, 
provided to the blender bot, we get a response. I'm honestly not super sure. <laughs> this kind of looks gross, but um, we get a response and we return it. It's, this is a lot of like stuff that I wouldn't really love to code because it's uh, a lot of tokenization and grossness that's kind of hard to understand. But we get a response from the the blender bot. So this is us not doing much work. It's Blenderbot getting all the response, uh, the, sort of the responses that we need to our prompt versus all of this, which is our actual response minus this right here to what we ask it. So we want to get down here. We create our bot. How can we help you? You know, you can say whatever you want here. And then you want to start asking questions. So you get the user input. If the user input is this you exit the program and you get the response from the user input so give it a run here hopefully that made sense um, this right here gross that's blenderbot stuff so and then this right here gross but it's blenderbot everything else is us like you don't even really need blenderbot but it, it would just be like what are you saying if you don't fall back on it so let's give it a shot CD in the chat bot. Let's try it out. Chatbot.py. Hi, how can I help you today? Let's zoom in on this. It lets me. It's not letting me, but alright, that's alright. Actually. My keyboard's messed up. Anyways. Hi. What's your name? My name's Cody Raby. That's perfect because it falls within the fuzzy wuzzy square. What's your name? Tell me your name. What's your name? Your name is, I said, hi, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? That's similar enough to this. It provides us with the correct response. Okay, let's say something completely random. What's the location of Eiffel Tower? The most random thing I, that could just come to my head. Now, see, it's taking a minute. It's falling on Blenderbot. Tokenizing what we said. Eiffel Tower is in Paris, France, one of the tallest buildings in the world. Sweet. I didn't program it to say that. I only have this stuff right here. Let's see. I didn't mean to click enter there. Okay. Do you have any pets? What's your height? I'm six foot on the spot, wearing shoes like today. Six foot one. Sweet. So it seems to be working good. And I said it differently too. I said, what's your height versus what is your height? So everything's working good. You know, I'll just say goodbye. And you can see it just ends like that. So it's pretty simple. Um, it's a cool way to make a small chat bot. You could add more stuff if you wanted to this. You only need um, these requirements right here. And I'm going to put the link to this in my description as well it's easy to make the big thing is this right here and then um this is pretty important for being able to actually have variations and what the users can ask it obviously all of this but this is basically like just matching stuff up with the key and the variations it's kind of complicated to explain it but it makes sense logically it falls back on Blenderbot if it doesn't recognize what the key was or the variation. And then that's how you get yourself a little chatbot, a really basic one using Python. It's pretty cool. Definitely not hard to make. But anyways, thank you all for watching the video. I hope I explained it well enough for it to make at least some sense. Hope you all got something out of it. Have a good one. Stay blessed.